So, uh, Hey sis, so I wanted to film a video tonight, but all of my ideas would require me to take off all the makeup I was already wearing or like do something like large scale. And it's like 7.56 PM. So it's basically my bedtime in about 45 seconds. So I wanted to do something that would be maybe just talky. I thought, well, what is a wealth of video ideas that I can refer to? Oh, it's the post on my community tab from a couple weeks ago where I asked you guys what sort of content you wanted to see coming from my channel in 2019. I found the perfect video idea that was given to me by a longtime subscriber, Jaylee James. Anything where you share memories connected to makeup or get enthusiastic about your collection. Those are some of my favorite videos that people do. I thought that that was a really amazing idea. We'll just like, you know, take you guys on a storytelling journey with some of my makeup products, tell you how I came to own them, maybe something fun that was happening while I had them on. I think that's very fun. And if you guys haven't already picked this up from my channel, if you're maybe new, I am quite the storyteller. I go on a lot of tangents and everybody hates it. I'm starting out with a terrible one. This is the Too Faced Cherry Bomb blush that was part of their 2D Fruity collection. It's red, it's got a gold shimmer, it's pretty. I have a negative memory associated with this, which is doubled because this is a scented product. And as we all know, scent memory is the strongest form of memory. So let me take you on a trip down memory lane. And I think I'm gonna put on some of this blush because I've had my blush on for several hours and it's not really present and accounted for anymore. So up until like April, I was working at a middle school in an after school program and it was terrible and I hated it and I wanted to die. From May onward, I worked for a temp agency and I was a little office temp. I did a lot of reception work throughout the summer and it was fine. It wasn't consistent, but like whatever Z's, I got to go into different office buildings and like use key cards and answer the phone. It's whatever. I have a great customer service voice. Good afternoon, Nisi Pisa Industries. How may I help you? My second to last temp job was at a very small architecture firm in a very wealthy part of the city. It was kind of an alienating experience. There were like 11 people that worked in the firm and the only person that wasn't an architect working there was me. So in addition to being like alone in the lobby, I also had to do everything for the business that was not architecture, reception, HR, payroll. I had to learn how to use QuickBooks. That was unfortunate. Numbers in general frightened me deeply. And you know, architects are incredibly hardworking people with very hard jobs. So they're at their desks, like nose to the grindstone the whole day. So I'd maybe talk to like one person unless I had to like <laughs> nervously go up to the head architect who is the boss of the whole business, obviously, and be like, hey, Mr. N last name, I don't know where this particular file is. I don't, and he's like, I don't know, figure it out. And I'm like, okay, I've been here for two days, but okay. I, you know, developed a minor anxiety about going to work at this place because it was not fun. And so our bathrooms were down the hall from our offices. The phone rang once every, I would say, two and a half to three minutes. So I almost never went to the bathroom because I didn't want to miss the phone. And I also did not know how to check voicemail on this phone because it's a big old console desk phone. I don't know how to use those. I barely know how to like transfer calls to like everybody's individual desk phone. When someone was like, hey, is Stacy there? I'd be like, oh yeah, hold on a second. <laughs> And it'd be fine. Like the office was so small that I could like hear Stacy be like, hello, Stacy architect. But I'd still be like, ah, where did I send them? Like I said, anxious. So I'd go to the bathroom like once a day and I would like literally back away from my desk like an inch at a time. Cause I knew I'm like, if the phone rings when I'm between here and the door, I'm gonna have to leap over the desk mission impossible style and answer the phone. So I made it out of the office. Um, and the phone hadn't rung. So I, was, I walked down the hall to the bathroom and it's one of those new agey sinks that's like soap dispenser next to automatic faucet, next to dryer, like all in a little row, which is great. It's like being on an airplane. Sometimes it malfunctioned. This was one of those times. I was washing my hands and the water didn't turn off and the drain was somewhat blocked up and the sink was starting to fill. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna flood the bathrooms and they're gonna think that I clogged the toilet because they're gonna see the water coming and I'm probably missing so many phone calls from clients about lumber. <clears throat> Just had a very small short panic attack before the water stopped from the faucet and it began to very, very, very slowly drain. And I exited that bathroom and never used it for the entire time I worked there which was only a week and a half. But the whole time I was in the bathroom thinking that the walls were closing in, I was wearing this blush. Among the scent of 
Hand soap and despair was also the cherry scent of this little blush from Too Faced. It's a little story for you. Next up, we have a story from this past summer. At the end of May, I went camping with a bunch of my gal pals, but it's a house in the woods, New England, trees, allergens, a lake. It was beautiful. We were obviously packing sunscreen because it was the outside. I had brought two sunscreens with me. One of them was this awful Pacifica sunscreen that I just bought at random at Target the day before I left that I didn't check to see if it was a mineral sunscreen or a chemical sunscreen. I should have known that because it was Pacifica, it was gonna be a mineral sunscreen. So it was basically just a whole tube of zinc oxide, which is essentially a whole tube of white paint. For a lot of people, zinc oxide is a fine sunscreen. Mineral sunscreens are fine. For melanated individuals, no, because it's just white pigment, it's just white. Um, if you put it on your face, you look like a snowman. Fortunately, I had brought another sunscreen with me and it was this one. This is the Supergoop Unseen sunscreen. This is a chemical sunscreen. It's got a trio, sorry, a qu there's four chemical sunscreens in here. Fast forward like 45 minutes later, we're at the mountain, we're hiking up it. Mid hike, my friend Emily decides she wants to re-up sunscreen. So she reaches into the backpack that we brought and she pulls out this and she started rubbing it on her arms and arms contain more skin than your face. She's using a whole lot of it. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. Uh, 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 Emily, what are you doing with my expensive exclusive sunscreen? Oh my God, I'm so, I didn't know that it was like not for, and I'm like, like I was fine, like I was obviously just like, no, it's fine, whatever. But in my heart, I was just like, oh my God, she used like half the bottle of my expensive sunscreen. Obviously she didn't because I still have like this much left of it and it's been months, clearly it's whatever, but I was just like, you're costing me money, Emily. But obviously it's fine. I love Emily so much, she's my favorite theater person. Oh dude, okay, this one's like depressing. At one of my other temp jobs, earlier in the summer. I was working at like a renewable energy laboratory. They very much did not need a temp. I was there Tuesdays and Thursdays for a whole month. The phone never rang. I never did anything. And there was a little laptop there on the desk for work, I guess. But I used it to go on Twitter. The time period that this happened in is very important. This was July of last year. Now, if you don't know, something very important to me happened in August of last year. On August 7th, I got a breast reduction and went from a 42H cup to being about a D cup, which is amazing. I am very happy now. Obviously, I'm paranoid every single day that they're gonna grow back, but it's better than having extreme back pain and worse body dysmorphia. So after my breast reduction was scheduled in May, I was like, okay, so can we have it tomorrow? Can we, I don't have to wait until August? And they were like, no, you have to wait until August. And I was like, are you sure, doctor? And they were like, yes, you very much have to wait until August. So I spent the whole summer leading up to August 7th being like, you know? It was like a week or so out from the reduction. My life was in absolute turmoil. Uh, there were other things going on that I won't get into for because they are very personal and demonetizable things. I was just gripped with anxiety and insecurity about my body and fear of the surgery and just like thoughts and fears and I was spending eight hours a day at a desk alone in a violently air-conditioned, very upscale office building with a laptop and no one else. Just imagine me like thousand yards staring into Amazon, just clicking through page after page of goods and services, just thinking like, what if I die? What if what they if grow they back grow immediately? Back what if they what can't if they do the surgery the after all? What if, uh, like just fretting about every conceivable concept. While I was thousand yards staring at Amazon, I bought this Color Club now. <laughs> this is the shade Harp on it from Color Club. It's a silver. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that was like ridiculous. This nail polish to me represents the existential adriftness that I was in in the weeks leading up to my breast reduction. This polish is all of my fears and anxiety about the radical changes I was going through in a bottle.
This is informative, right? Oh my God, I just felt a lot of feelings again. <laughs> Whoops. All right, I got some wholesome ones and they all weirdly have to do with liquid lipsticks. This one is about the Smashbox Always On Liquid Lipstick in the shade Bouse. This one is brief. It has to do with when I bought this lipstick. I purchased this along with the Milk Kush Mascara after getting paid one day in the summer because the place that I worked was really close to a Sephora. I walked in and I was like, you know what? I'm about to ball out. <laughs> I was torn between this lipstick and the Fenty Uncensored Stunna Lip Paint, which is the exact same color. The only difference between them is the consistency. They're the exact same shade of red and the exact same price. They're both $24, which is very expensive. What led me to decide on this was I was wandering between the aisles before checking out and there was a girl who was standing in the Smashbox aisle looking at the liquid lipsticks and she seemed kind of lost. And we made brief eye contact above the aisles and she was like, whoa, what lipstick are you wearing? And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's this magic box always on like with lipstick on the shade. Wow, why do you ask? And she's like, oh my God, I've been wondering if I should buy that shade. It looks so amazing on you. I'm definitely gonna get it. And I'm like, yes. Uh, I had like a little makeup love connection with her and obviously said, thank you. I love when stuff like that happens. It honestly sparks so much joy in my black little heart and it makes me very happy. There that is. <laughs> just in time for the story to be done. So, <laughs> I mean, Lily Singh snapped on this color. That's just a truism. This next one is the NYX Liquid Suede in the shade Cherry Skies. This is my go-to, I need to look crazy, sexy, cool in like three seconds lipstick. I wear it whenever I'm trying to like seal the deal. I'm kidding, the last time I wore this was to a family wedding. So, <laughs> obviously not. It's kind of like an instant confidence boost lipstick. I really love it. It's like a very, it's coming across as a bit brighter on camera, but it's a bit, it's definitely a deep like raspberry. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I just had like a lot of good, like uh, memories of being like dressed up. I love dressing up, like being dressed up with this lipstick on. I told you it was vague. Sorry for being positive. <laughs> I actually have a story about my other NYX liquid suede. This is the one in the shade Alien. I bought this for like $2.49 at Nordstrom Rack like seven months ago. It's not a phase, mom. This is who I am. And I proceeded to put it on in a Sephora for like rebellious reasons. And then I proceeded to walk out of that mall and onto the train home and got like really weird looks from everybody. And everybody was kind of like staying away from me because I was like a creepy person in black lipstick, which isn't that weird, but I live in Massachusetts. In the immortal words of my favorite comedian, Chris Fleming, Nobody has taken a risk in Massachusetts since the Boston Tea Party, so. <laughs> I kind of felt like, oh man, people look at me like I'm a freak. I shouldn't have bought this lipstick, I look stupid. And I got off the train and I went to my bodega, which is my safe space. And there used to be a really nice lady who worked at the bodega who would always compliment me. She doesn't work there anymore. I don't know where she went. This might've been like the last time I saw her actually. And she was like super enthusiastic. She was like, wow, I love your lipstick. And I was like, thank you. I was just like, oh my God, thank you so much. Can I also get like two Slim Jims? I'm hurting. I miss her so much. <laughs> I hope wherever she is, she's happy. Oh, bizarrely, all three of my Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suits have a story attached to them. I gotta work fast with these. I hate the formula of these liquid lipsticks, but somehow I have three of them. Do you know? Not even God does. But guess what? It's okay because only God forgives, so. Um, Jesus, okay. Well, y there you go. What? This is the Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit in the shade Give Me Mocha. This one is special because this was the lip color that I wore in my very first tutorial. And then I also wore it again when I recreated that tutorial in a video that nobody watched. <laughs> Pretty and uncomfortable, which is why I have a bunch of lip balm on underneath it. This next one is the shade Hexcellent. The day that I bought this, I was at CVS, I was perusing, it was the middle of September, and there was this pregnant woman who was standing next to me. And I'm like marveling at like the splendor of cosmetics in front of me, and she looks kind of stressed out. She looks over and she starts talking to me and she's like, man, it's kind of overwhelming at the options, right? Like there's so many. And I look at her like, I know, isn't it great? And we keep talking and she's like, oh, I have this 13 year old daughter who just started wearing makeup. And she took this bronzer that I, and it's the same bronzer that I've worn every day for the past like five, 10 years. And I cannot remember what it was actually called. And I'm like, oh man, 
I wish I had that utilitarian <laughs> relationship with makeup. I was like, well, you know, I don't work here, but I know a stupid amount about makeup. I could probably help you find it. And she's like, oh, it had like a sun on it, I think. And I'm like, oh, it's either from Wet n Wild or Physician's Formula. Like I immediately was just like, I know exactly which two things it might be. I bring her over to Physician's Formula. I bend down to get it for her because she is very pregnant. And I'm like, is it this? And she's like, yes, that's it. Oh my God. And I'm like, ah! We did it! I went to go check out. I was like, good luck with the baby. Tell your daughter she doesn't need to wear makeup, but it's cool if she experiments. I made a whole video about it, or this is taking place in the past. I will make a whole video about it. So this reminds me of that lady who, I don't know her name, but she was, you know, a white woman in Massachusetts. So it's very likely her name was Lauren or Elizabeth or Sarah. Her name was probably Sarah. So hi, Sarah. <laughs> this last cat suit is the shade Nice to Fuchsia. I'll put it on and then I'll tell my little story. This one is more of a goofy little anecdote, but you'll see. You'll all see. I bought this a couple of weeks ago, actually. I was in New York visiting some friends. I exclusively take mega buses home from New York City because I'm cheap. I was leaving the CVS where I buy my like road snacks. So I had a bunch of energy bars and like some pretzels and a big old life water. I happened to walk by the Wet n Wild end cap and I saw this and I was like, yoink. And I was very early. So I was the first in line and I was the only person in line for my bus. There is a bus attendant who was kind of like in my vicinity, who was staring at me. Oh no, this man's gonna come hit on me. And he did. Of course. Ah, it's terrifying being a woman in the world. And so he came up and he was like, hey, like, uh, how are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm standing in line waiting for a mega bus, so not thrilling. What are you doing? Like, where are you going? Like, where, why are you in New York? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I, of course, started lying because I didn't really feel like sharing a bunch of information about my own life with this dude. I happened to be wearing this ring. I wear this ring a lot. It was my great aunt's, um, it was her wedding band. I wear it all the time. You'll notice I swapped rings so I could tell this anecdote. This one is my dad's. I also wear this all the time. I haven't bought like any of my own jewelry. <laughs> These earrings are from my friend Ivana. This necklace was sent to me by Georgia Harris. I made up this whole story about how I had just gotten engaged and my fiance lived in Boston and I lived in New York, but I was about to make the move out to Boston. And I was talking about like, oh, I know it's a little bit colder, but like, I think I'll be able to figure it out. I do live here in New York City, which is not true. And if I hadn't been wearing this ring, I don't think I would have been able to sell that lie as well as I did. But this has nothing to do with that lipstick, but it was in my bag in this little plastic while I was doing this lie. And as soon as you name drop the fiance, they're like, oh, Okay. I mean, not always, very much not always, but in this case, yes. And it was like, well, have a good trip. And I'm like, um, thanks. I'll tell my fiance. You say hi. I am so not engaged that it has shifted into negative numbers of fiancés, but it was a fun line. And also this is a great lipstick. Oh, also this John's like an exact dupe for the Flamingo Acid Mademoiselle lipstick from Fenty. So that's cool. We love, what are you called? Give me fuchsia. What the frick's up, fuchsia? Nice to fuchsia. Obviously, makeup that was gifted to me by other people is wonderful and very sentimental and very special to me. All of my amazing gifts from my saint of a subscriber, Wendy. Wendy. I'm still quaking over this. I talk about this gift and these products in detail in my fall haul autumnal acquisitions video. Wendy, Wendy! I have Wendy's note that she sent to me above my night's dance so I can look at it every day and weep. But I just got something that is also very, very, very special. The homie, Georgia Harris, who you're probably subscribed to and if you aren't, why? Sent me a present, this palette. Look at her. Apparently the larger shadows in here are Pat McGrath shadows, which I can't buy for myself because Pat McGrath isn't cruelty free, but I have them now. So, uh -huh. frick off principles. These newts up here. And then we have like just the most Slytherin row in the world down here. This is the Slytherin palette. I have my own Slytherin palette. I'm so excited about this. And also now I'm stressed out because now I have to send Georgia something really nice back. So thanks Georgia for making me be a good friend. Now that puts me under a lot of pressure. This one is kind of cheating and I'll explain why. This is the NYX matte liquid liner that I've bought semi recently. I bought it mm, three or four months ago. But the time in my life I'm gonna be talking about 
is something that happened to me when I was living in Florence, Italy, which was my junior year of college. And that was the school year of like 2014 to 15. I don't have any makeup from that phase of my life. The only makeup I wore was black cat eye liner, Benefit Their Real mascara, no cheek products and chapstick and nothing in my brows. I don't know what eyeliner I was using, but there's a pretty solid chance it was this one because I've been using this for years. 46% chance that on this particular April night on Via Masaccio at the S.A. Lunga supermarket in central Florence near Le Cure that I was wearing this eyeliner when this happened to me. I had a bit of an emotional breakdown when I lived in Florence. I was very scared of speaking Italian with Italians. Uh, there were a lot of them around me, so I didn't go out a ton. It was Saturday night and I was spending it alone at home in my room on Tumblr. And I walked up the street to the supermarket that was on the block I lived on, which was called Eselunga. That's not important to the story. I just know that I was at a supermarket. This is almost the end of the school year. It was the end of April. And I was just ready to go back to the United States and continue being a failure. I was so scared of everybody and I was so anxious to even leave my apartment. And I was just fearful and I was surrounded by beauty and I felt guilty that I wasn't taking advantage of it. And I was just so stressed out about the situation. And I also had so much art history coursework to do, it was ridiculous. <laughs> While I was walking to the St. Luca, I was like thinking about like, the sculptures that were in the garden of like the Medici family. I was just like, my mind was in a billion places. I buy this plastic container of pizzelle. <music> Little pizzas. I was in line for like 20 minutes because everybody was doing grocery shopping and I was just like on edge, man. And I'm leaving Casalunga and I decide I want to eat a pizzelle. So I pop open the plastic box and I take out one pizzelle and then I like, kind of change my step a little bit to get out of the way of a man whose dog was like walking towards me and the whole entire box of pizzelle slipped out of my hands and onto the street. And so there I was standing with one pizzelle in my hand and 15 strewn across the sidewalk in front of me. And I had built myself up for this entire day to be brave enough to go to the supermarket and buy myself something for dinner. And I had dropped all of it on the sidewalk. And I looked at it and the only words that came into my mind were this one John Mulaney bit where it's in the, one of my favorite bits of his where he's talking about try, lying to get Xanax at the doctor's office and it results in him getting a prostate exam. And so he has this thing where he's like, there was a part of me that was like, you know, this might as well happen. Adult life is already so goddamn weird. Ah, le pizzelle sono cadute. Such is life. And then I walked home. I picked up the plastic thing, obviously. I left the pizzelle for like a dog or a pigeon or I don't know what wild animals they have in Italy, boars? If like frescoes are to be believed. I was just like, yeah, why not? Why not have this happen? Everything else is spiraled out of my control. Stu, why are you making pudding at four o'clock in the morning? <laughs> it's like, because, because I've, I've lost, lost control, control of my, my life. life. That was just me staring at this assortment of mini pizzas on this sidewalk. People had to like walk around me. I was just frozen thinking about John Mulaney and prostate exams and mini pizzas. And while that was happening, I was probably wearing this eyeliner that I'm wearing right now. That's why it's relevant. It's what's on my eyes right now. But yeah, it was a dark time in my life. <laughs> One of several. <laughs> that was my silly little like makeup memories association, whatever storytelling. I hope you enjoyed it. This was fun to do. I like just like telling anecdotes. This is also only tangentially related to makeup, but at least I'm wearing makeup while I talk about it. So it still counts. You can't unsubscribe because it still counts. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video. But before you go, I'm gonna need you to do a quick favor for me. You could go ahead and have an amazing day for me. Then that would be a positive memory that I could then look back on at a later date. I'm wearing my ColourPop lip balm. There you go. So in like a couple years, I'll be like, oh, remember that time I was wearing this lip balm while you had an amazing day for me? <laughs>
sick. If you would like to engage with me betwixt uploads, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Nisi Pisa. And I also have a second channel called Extra Nisi Pisa where I post music and covers on occasion. I'll try to do it more soon. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to use code Nisi Pisa for 10% off at checkout. Bye. Time to bother this animal. Oh! Beep! Chunky. Ah! I'm sorry, big chungus. Shadows. <laughs> she is small.